Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, in the past I've made a couple of videos about how to prepare for piano performance and how to practice before the performance. And for those who are interested, I will link those videos in the description below. But today I wanted to talk about how to revive your old repertoire to prepare for a large recital within a week. First of all, um, if you have a choice, try to mix old and new repertoire in your program. Uh, both have advantages and disadvantages. The pros of playing old pieces are being less afraid of memory slips, because old pieces tend to be rooted deeper in the muscle memories. The disadvantage could be tone quality, as everything in the inner musical ear would be a bit more dull, a little bit more thick. Now, the pros of playing new pieces are tone quality, beautiful details, and freshness of expression. But because it's fresh and new, it's not deep enough in the memory muscles, and so memorization of these pieces is less solid. So my advice would be to start and to finish the program with old pieces, to, to feel confident, and to mix some of your new pieces in between. Now, let me give you an approximate plan of your practice when you need to revive your old and new repertoire. Uh, this is a plan for around an hour recital with, let's say, 10 pieces, 5-7 minutes each. The first five days, you get all pieces together and practice around two hours a day. And the last three days, you get all the program together. <laughs> And depending on the size of your recital, uh, it, it could be four, five hours a day. And in a moment, we're going to take a closer look at these days. But to summarize, in the first five days, you're clarifying sound imagination and intonation parts in a piece. And in the last three days, you practice stamina and endurance to play through the whole program not being afraid of the overwhelming size of your program, but feel it as one piece instead. And practicing to play from your heart, thinking only about music and yet not having any memory slips. And first you do it without any audience, and then you start challenging yourself more by recording yourself and playing in front of the audience. And again, uh, for those who are interested, have a link uh, this image in the description below. Let's take a closer look at the first five days uh, of your practice routine. As I said before, every day you are reviving two pieces by going through two steps, and each piece shouldn't take more than an hour to finish. And today I'm going to show you all the steps on the example of one of my old pieces. So the first stage is imagination, away from the piano. Imagine both hands in slow tempo, right away in sound texture, harmony, dynamics, voicing, movement, grissando. And you will be surprised how much you're able to recall instantaneously, even after a few years of break. Um, after you've done this once, you come to the piano, in front of the piano, now you play slowly with both hands, focusing on imagination and, um, let's say, basic intonation, like weight, posture, and articulations. So, when you play, it looks something like this. You're also focusing on all the movements, wrist, elbow. Then you go. So, etc. Um, now, um, I just want to say <laughs> here that. Um, when I open the score, my old score, it has all the fingering, all the elbow movements and phrasing slurs. And this is another benefit of writing all those details very precisely in the score at the first place. 
So the next time, you know, let's say some months or so years later, when you open the score again and you play this piece again, because you're gonna recall all the fingering and movements exactly how your muscles remember them, it will speed up the reviving process um, drastically. So, <laughs> always write fingering, always write elbow movements, always write um, phrasing and form structure in the piece. Later, you will thank yourself for this. <laughs> so that's why I'm so careful about not to lose any of my scores. It's like they are copied, they are printed out, they are on Google Drive, <laughs> they are on hard disks, they're everywhere not to lose them. Um, okay, so this is step one, right? Now we're going to the stage two. Uh, so here we're going to play with, I call it advanced intonation. So this step includes playing with phrasing, musical image, form, time, and artistry. And um, you would need to practice deliberately by a sentence at the time, by two sentences to three sentences by four or six sentences and the whole piece just like you would did in the learning stage in the first place and um, gradually you're going to bring the piece to the original tempo uh, eliminating any memory slips so that's the main goal of this step um, so now on this step, I'm going to clarify phrasing structure first, in my mind, even if it's written in the score. <laughs> uh, most probably it will be forgotten <laughs> after months or years of break. So I'm just looking at the score, as you can see, this gray, red snows. Okay, I have an idea of motifs, of phrases, of sentences. Good. Um, then, if this piece in the fast tempo, like this moment, you need to start with a moderate tempo. Don't start right away with fast tempo. So basically, I see the phrasing. I got it. Okay. Now I tune into the musical character, image of music. Form. Let's say I start with the first sentence. It's a beginning. Okay. And I choose moderate pulse. Okay. And now I speak up about all of this through artistry. So when I get all of these sensations together, I start playing, feeling all of this in between notes through my intonation. So it will look this way. you can even find that maybe uh, you could change something in the structure of phrasing. For example, in the last um, phrase, I used to make this last motif more important. And now I feel that maybe this harmony more expressive than this. So I make the first motif more important in this phrase. And I go to with energetic Gemini and uh, I'll just still try to be creative even on this stage. Um, okay, so now I'm gonna play again in the same time. And if I played before looking at the score, now I'm trying to play without looking at the score. And if some memory slips will occur, I pay attention to those exact intervals that I should remember. I don't know, for example. Mm -hmm. 
I would play something like this. So I would remember, oh, okay, this is the Triton here. Okay, something like this. <laughs> um, so basically, the next time I'm trying to play by memory. Okay, I don't need to show this. After that, the next time I play the third time, I'm gonna start speeding up. And I will speed up um, as many times as it takes to bring it to original tempo. So let's say I'm going a little bit more like this, right? If I need to go faster, I will go, let's say, okay, I'm ready and I play. After you're done with the first sentence, good job. You make it perfect. Then go to the next sentence. So the next sentence is rising to climax sentence. Um, then climax sentence. Okay, so after I finished with one sentence at a time, then I will do the same routine with, uh, let's say in this piece, it will be three sentences at a time. So uh, again, the first time I will play probably by the score. Um, making everything clear, phrasing, musical image, form, time, artistry, my imagination. Next time I will try to play by memory, eliminating an, any memory slips. And then the next time I will try to speed up. After I'm done with three sentences at a time, then I come back and I do the same routine, let's say with six sentences at a time. Then with maybe the whole piece, because six sentences, it's already kind of half of the piece. <laughs> uh, so that's what you do within one hour. And then the next hour, you just practice the same way the next piece. So that's how your five days of practice should look like. And, um, now let's talk about the last three days. So you would want to play through the whole program four times a day. <laughs> so two times in the morning, two times in the evening. End up playing your recital program around 12 times before your performance day. And um, this is kind of the ideal situation that you should keep in your mind and know that in this case you will feel secure while performing. So knowing that, you should also understand that if you didn't play, let's say, four times a day, or maybe you just play once just before your performance, the day or before your performance. So don't expect anything good to happen on the stage. Um, so coming back to this three days. So the first day, when you play, I suggested to focus more on making everything right, playing basically like a good student with a cold head, um, uh, with a good control over everything you need to think about while playing. Noticing memory or technical slips. After each round, go through the score of each piece to remind yourself difficult sections and practice them fixing those lost notes, improving maybe hand movements. Uh, don't forget to learn backwards. And in the last two days, uh, while playing, you need to switch even though it's kind of hard to let go of control, but you really have to start practicing that. You need to switch your full attention to music only, to the message and images you want to convey through your performance, uh, to everything basically you want to speak through your heart to your audience. And um, there should be much less uh, memory slips by that time, but if any occur, just you know keep fixing them after every round of your playing. So you play the program again, you go through the score, you remember, you remind yourself those slips, you recall them, you're fixing them, learning backwards, good. Then you play another round. <laughs> then again, you go to the score, you go through the score, 
remind yourself those um, challenging parts, fix them, then in the, in the play again. <laughs> uh, so that's basically how it should look like uh, when you want to um, successfully prepare within a short time your recital program. And that's about it, um, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.